Hey now, before we get into this review and breakdown, spoiler warning for Bad Batch S3 E12 Juggernaut. Spoilers! After last week's double helping of Star Wars emotions, the Bad Batch took a step back this week to give fans some time to keep licking their wounds. And while this Juggernaut episode had a surprising character returned in incremental plot gains, it really flirted with being a full-on filler kind of episode. There really is no such thing as filler content in Star Wars, but man, did it feel like nothing informative happened in this episode, outside of the odd reveal that the Empire kept one of its bigger liabilities alive in Rampart, and that he knows how Tantus Base's coordinates are kept secret. The Tantus scenes with Omega were more of the same. Nothing new was learned about Necromancer. The same insights about needing Omega into Force Sensitive was reiterated yet again. And the idea of using kids for Imperial experiments continues to cause Dr. Carr concern. Sure, she may be one step closer to realizing she's being a huge piece of crap and will eventually help Omega, the Force Kids, and possibly all of the other imprisoned folk on Tantus, but that is not a new reveal. She was clearly affected greatly after learning about the Vault, so the audience is very clued into her conflicted state of mind. Sure, the breakout mission on Erebus looked cool and featured the type of Star Wars action beats we all know and love, but sadly, after being set up last week for a frenetic and emotional push towards the series finale, this episode just felt flat and left much to be desired, which is a first for this excellent final run of The Bad Batch. Top moment time, and it's singular. While it didn't contribute greatly to expanding upon this season's overarching plot, the turbo tank joust chase was some bitchin' looking Star Wars action. Besides the clear callback to Jin Erso's breakout in Rogue One, this action scene was just supercharged Star Wars, and another example as to why clones were so much more efficient than the Empire stormtroopers. Not to mention the Jow segment, which was completely insane but supremely cool to see visually, especially Hunter's ramp jump at the end. It got even more Star Wars when the gunships gave chase, so overall this was some vintage Star Wars action from top to bottom. The eggs and references are limited as usual. Hey, Rampart was kept alive for some silly reason, which makes absolutely no sense considering he knows a ton of Imperial secrets. But hey, he looks sexy AF with a beard, am I right? Really though, how does Palpatine let this dude live when he knows the truth about Kamino, how to figure out Tantus' location, and other military operation intel? Talk about super villain oversight at its finest. And as mentioned before, Rampart's breakout mirrored Jin Erso's very closely from Rogue One. It was just missing a tender clothesline from an assassin bot. Hey, if you like this type of content, make sure to sub to the Star Wars Time Show on YouTube, socials, and podcasts.